Okay, so I'm doing new patient exams today and uh, young Crystal has just shown up for a consultation. She's 10 years old and the concern was the crowding and the protrusion of the incisors. Crystal, give me a big smile. So you can see a class two open bite. That incisor, because it's so far forward, already has a history of trauma. She's actually knocked and broken that four, four times, okay. right? Uh, and it's had a resin on there. And you can see there's obviously an increased chance of trauma when you have an overbite like that. Now, just relax your mouth there, Crystal. Now you can see on normal function, we have an open mouth posture. We have a short upper lip so that uh, when Crystal really smiles, she'll show a lot of gum. Uh, the other thing is we have a lower lip trap where the tongue is gonna form a seal with the lower lip. So let's have a look at that a little bit closer. Okay, now just open again there for me and just bite together, good. Okay, can you swallow for me? Give me a swallow, oh, you got saliva in your mouth? You can see the tongue thrust there. Do it one more time for me. Swallow, there we go, perfect. Now, Crystal, can you open and put your chin up for a second? And you can see how narrow that palate is, right? So the concept of early treatment in children who have a class two bite like this is if you see a high palate, it, the tongue obviously is not sitting on the palate. So as speech pathologists, the goal in treatment is to get the tongue sitting on the spot. But if the tongue size 10 and the palate size 4, that's never going to happen. So what I do as an orthodontist, I would expand that palate and I'd expand it to the size it needs to be to accommodate the tongue because the tongue would be the retainer of my expansion. Now, Crystal, open really big, right? Now, try and lift your tongue up. Yeah. So the other thing we look at is the frenal attachment. Is it possible for that tongue to hit the spot? Uh -uh. Uh, just bite together again. And again, you can see the crossbite on this side of the mouth. On the right side, we have a unilateral posterior crossbite. So you can see there's no room for the canines, the fangs, if you like, right? So by me widening the palate, uh, three benefits. I'm correcting the posterior crossbite. I'm making room for the canines and I'm creating the space for the tongue repositioning. Now, if we do all that, we have a, a better facial uh, skeleton to work with um, as opposed to what I was taught to do when I went to orthodontic school and that was just simply say, well, there's no room, so let's pop out two teeth here and two teeth there. If you take out four teeth, obviously, uh, the palate's gonna get narrower and if the palate gets narrower, the tongue has less room. And I've seen a lot of children who've had that older style of treatment uh, where their tongue then uh, flops on the back of their airway in increases their likelihood of having snoring and sleep apnea problems. So the benefit of having a young child for a consultation, it's quite easy to widen the palate and clearly this is what we want to do here. Um, so thank you very much Crystal for allowing us to look at your teeth. Right.